Hello and welcome to this beginner tutorial in Blender 2.8. If you don't already have Blender 2.8, all you need to do to download it is go to www.blender.org forward slash 2 8, click download Blender 2.8 beta, and then download the version which corresponds with your version of Windows. Once the zip file finishes downloading, extract it and run the blender.exe file that's inside. When you run that file for the first time, you'll be greeted with this 3D scene. It will be set up with a camera, a default cube, and a light. You can rotate around the scene by holding middle mouse button and moving your mouse. You can pan by holding shift middle mouse button and then moving your mouse. And you can zoom by scrolling the scroll wheel. You can also go to set side views using the numpad. So 1 goes to front view, 3 goes to side view, control 1 to the back, control 3 to the other side, and 7 to the top. You can change the view type by pressing Z and then choosing Rendered, Wireframe or Look Dev. Look Dev allows you to develop materials without having to use all of the intensive processes that the render setting uses. Wireframe allows you to see through your model and Rendered uses the full rendering engine to produce the output which you will see when you finally render out your image. To make your first render, we're going to press X to delete and then OK to delete the default cube. Then we're going to press Shift A to add a new primitive, choose Mesh and then Plane. This is a flat plane which will form our ground. I'm then going to press S to scale and then type the number 5 which will set it to scales factor of 5. Left click to select. Now when I press 0 on the numpad, I will go to my camera view. I can press N to bring up this side panel on which I can click lock camera to view which is under the view tab. Now whatever I do panning or orbiting with my mouse my camera will follow. I'm going to move it so that it looks at the origin about like this and now uncheck lock camera to view. Now when you look around it will snap away from your camera and your camera will remain still. I'm now going to insert the primitive which we're going to use for our first render and that's going to be the monkey head. To do that I'm going to click shift A again to add a new primitive, mesh and then monkey. I'm going to press S to scale it down, 0 to go into camera view, G to grab and then Z to lock that motion to the Z axis. I'm going to lift it just up a little bit. When you're rotating you have two different modes. R once just rotates it around the axis which is straight out from your view. R and then pressing either X, Y or Z will either lock it to the X, Y or Z axis of rotation or pressing R twice will give you this sort of pan ball type rotation. I'm going to press R and then Z to lock the rotation to the Z axis and then point it so it's facing the camera. I'm then going to scale it up a little bit by pressing S and then moving my mouse, G to grab. Z to lock that movement to the Z axis and then lift it up a little bit more. Now you'll see that this model is very low poly which means that it's not got very many vertices which means it looks really jagged like this. To increase the number of vertices on a model you can add a subdivision modifier. You can go to the modifiers tab on the right over here, click add modifier and then subdivision surface. This will not only make new vertices but it will also smooth the whole model by putting the new vertices where it expects it to go rather than just dividing a face into four. You can turn up the number and then you can see it's still made up of single flat faces but to make Blender act as if these faces are smooth faces we can go up here to object and then shade smooth. If we press zero to go back to our camera view and then Z and choose rendered view you can see that this model is already being lit by our light. I want to change the look of the model however in changing its material. To do this I'm going to go over here to the material tab, create a new material. I can name this whatever I want so I'm going to name it monkey material and then here base color is whatever color you want the material to be so I'm going to choose orange. I'm going to reduce the roughness which will make it slightly more shiny and if you want a more in-depth explanation of all of these settings there will be in a video to come in this series. I'm now going to come over to the world tab on the right. You see the background is currently all grey which doesn't look very appealing. That's because we have a colour of grey set for its lighting style 
and a strength of 1. You can increase the strength, which is increasing the strength of lighting coming from everywhere in the scene. This kind of lighting isn't very accurate because in real life you don't have light coming from everywhere, you only have it coming from single points. So we're going to turn this off by setting the strength to 0. Now we've got a much more accurate looking scene. You'll see that there's no reflection of the monkey on the surface of the floor. The reason for that is in the render tab we have screen space reflections turned off. Having this turned on is a requirement to have any reflections in Blender 2.8 using the EV render engine. Turning this on, you'll see we get a lot of reflection under here where light is bouncing off the floor and up into the monkey. To make it more accurate, we can turn off half res trace which will allow double the resolution for tracing the rays which are bouncing off and hitting the monkey. And then under shadows, we can choose high bit depth which will allow more resolution for the shadows and soft shadows which will stop the edges from looking as jagged. What we now need to do is bake indirect lighting. If you're using the Cycles render engine, you won't need to do this, but it is a requirement if you want lighting to look realistic in the EV render engine. To bake lighting, we need to do Shift A, and then a light probe and an irradiance volume. Scale this up by pressing S, and then G to move it, Z to only move it on the Z axis, and then lift it up. Now under the render tab, we can go to indirect lighting and bake indirect lighting. Now you'll see there's a lot more light around the scene because it's also calculated extra bounces, which it doesn't do normally. You can't click bake indirect lighting unless you have an irradiance volume object. So now we want to export this as an image from our scene. The way to do this is to go first into output and select the resolution of our image. I'm going to leave this at 1920 by 1080 pixels because that's a normal 16 by 9 aspect ratio image. The frame rate doesn't make a difference at the moment because we're only doing a single image and not an animation. Under output you can choose where you want the image to be saved once it's finished rendering. This is only for animations because if you're only rendering a single image you still need to save the image manually. Now to render the image you just need to go to render in the top left and then render image. It will work for a couple of seconds and then you'll have an image here. Now if you want to save it you just need to go to image, save as, choose wherever you want and name it whatever you want and then click save as image. You can now open this image and you'll see the image that you've created in 3D. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If it's helped you or you think it will help anyone you know please consider sharing it and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more in depth any of the features which I showed in this video or more advanced features for modeling and rendering. Thanks for watching.